You picked up the guitar when you were 14. Let's go back. And one interesting thing that just jumped out at me is you said you learned how to practice in your head because you only had 30 minutes. Yeah. Your parents would only let you practice for 30 minutes. Yeah. I read somewhere that Coltrane did the same. He was not the practice part, but he was able to play instruments in his head mm -hmm. as a way to like think through different lines, different musical thoughts, that kind of yeah. stuff. I just, uh, maybe can you tell the story of that? Yeah, I just grew up in a, a environment that was uh, focused on academia. Yeah. And I fell in love with guitar and really just wanted the focus to be that. Um, so my limit was 30 minutes a day for, I don't even remember how many times a week. Might have been every day or five days a week, whatever. So your parents didn't want you to play more than that? Um, no. And so I just learned how to visualize the fretboard in my head and I'd practice all day in my head. It's kind of like, you know, the the uh, the Queen's Gambit, the TV show mm -hmm. with Anya Taylor-Joy and she just like sees ceiling. it on the ceiling. I used to do that with the fretboard. <laughs> yeah, just practice. And I actually recommend it to every musician because if you're just practicing here, uh, you don't know what is more dominant necessarily. Is it this or is it your motor skills? Mm -hmm. If you just take that away and do it here, you know you've got it. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that that happened and that I learned how to do that. And in terms of like learning fast, cause like I had to like learn how to, well, I had to try to absorb a lot of information in a short amount of time when I did have the instrument. I kind of would like do things in bursts, like even in that half an hour, mm -hmm. I would just go like play for a couple minutes and then I'd stop for like a minute. And then I'd do it again. And I noticed there was like a huge difference mm -hmm. between the first time and the second time. Whereas if I just kept repeating stuff, it would be like much slower. But what did you do in, the, in that minute? Just hang out. Just integrate? Like, yeah, I just like my brain, it's like my brain was telling me like, just chill out for a sec. That's enough information. Let me let me take a second to integrate that. Yeah, <laughs> that's what at least what it felt like to me. And the most hilarious thing happened a couple months ago. I know you're friends with Andrew Huberman, mm -hmm. so he put out some clip which was a part of one of his podcasts about learning. And he said that there was some research done on learning fast, mm -hmm. and that if you practice something for you know, a minute or so, and then you let your brain rest for 30 seconds or a minute, that in that 30 seconds or a minute, your brain does the repetition 20 to 30 times faster and in reverse. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa, that's so cool because that's what I used to do when I was a kid. Like now there's science that proves that, mm -hmm. which is really cool for, you know, for musicians to know that, that that's a good way to practice efficiently. Because, you know, like some musicians, they're like practicing for six, seven, eight hours a day. Yeah. I've never done that. I've never practiced more than an hour a day, even now. Like I've just, just that's my technique mm -hmm. and it works. Are you uh, also practicing in your head sometimes? Now I'm not practicing as much. I'm more always writing songs right. in my head. So that's why I like silence. That's why I love being in the empty hotel room and being alone or, you know, songs come to me while I'm showering or walking around doing the dishes or occasionally when I'm hanging out with friends or like comedians and people just like say shit and I'll be like, that's a cool line. I'm just like jot it down on my phone. So it's not always musical, it's sometimes lyrical. It's more lyrical than musical now because it's like, for me, it's like, well, there's so much music in the world. If I'm going to write a song, I want I want the song to be about something interesting. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, the words matter to me. Yeah, and the right work and it has so much power. It's yeah. crazy. Like we said, with Leonard, Leonard Cohen. And then they're often simple. The really yeah. powerful ones are simple. And like you when you mentioned Hallelujah, you know, he wrote like eighty verses to Hallelujah <laughs> before he narrowed it down to like four. And it took him like fifteen, twenty years to write that song. Yeah. So some writers will do that, like, and then other writers just vomit it out, and it's and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
like I've heard that Bob Dylan or Joni Mitchell, they're like, they're fast writers. They just kind of, just kind of comes out. Mm -hmm. That makes me feel so good to know Leonard Cohen wrote so many verses of that. Like that, that was, uh, that was so deliberately crafted. Yeah. Extensively, rigorously crafted. He just would spend months and years and constantly refining, refining. Do you have songs like that for yourself? Or you yeah, you find yeah. for many years? It's song dependent. Some just flow out and it's like, oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. Everything's there. And then other songs, it's like you might have started it with music and there's some words that come out and then trying to fill in the rest of the words. Sometimes it can be like a square peg in a round hole. And other times it's like, oh, no, I can, you know, it, it, it depends. Sometimes it becomes like a math problem and hopefully it doesn't. Because you just want to say what's right for the song. And usually when you, you know, write it all together, like the lyric and the melody and the chords and everything's kind of developing at once, at least for the first draft, that's very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. Like Sondheim used to write like that. Just like he wouldn't move on until like he would just go this way. Whereas for me, it's just like, I'll just go with what seems to be coming naturally and I'll just let it be what it is. And then you come back and you say, okay, well, what, what, what do I have to do to this now? Look, what's needed?